listen to Sportsnet Lakers. I'm Allie Clifton. Joining me is our Lakers insider, Mike Bresnahan, Lakers reporter, Mike Trudell. You already know it's the Mike and Mike show. And Allie, yeah. and as excited as I am to see your face, yeah. he has some pretty fire kicks. Oh, this makes me miss Karan Butler. How Stay healthy. Is. <laughs> Shout out Tough Juice. Thank you, uh, thank you to LeBron and Nike LA. Uh, yeah. Shout out King James. Very cool. Appreciate that. Yeah. Mike, uh, good, good yoga. I, I imagine fire. you do something like that to be able to do that. Hips a Let's, sore, actually, okay. Okay. Yeah, Sorry about that. Yeah. Good kicks, though. Yeah. Let's dive right <laughs> in. Good to see the both of you. If you feel like the previous season just ended, you are not that far off. Huh. 71 days between Game 6 of the NBA Finals and the start of the 2020-21 season for the reigning NBA champs, the shortest offseason in pro sports history. Lakers are looking to be the first team to repeat since the Warriors did it in 2017 and 2018. And LBJ knows the quest for an 18th title will not be easy. I guess the bullseye just becomes even greater, even if that's even possible. Um, you know, one, for me personally, uh, the bullseye has always been on my back or on my front since I entered the league. And then you add in the Laker name on, on top of that, uh, the Lakers franchise, you know, the bullseye has been on this franchise for a long time as well. So, you know, understanding that everyone's going to come at us, everyone's going to, um, you know, try to, to uh, you know, take away from us defending our title. But, you know, for me personally, last year we won the, we won the ring. Uh, we won the title. And this year is a new challenge. Um, it's, it's, it's everybody opportunity to go out there and do it. So, you know, as long as we go in with that, with that mindset and be humbled about our process and, um, you know, and not worry about what we did last year, we need to worry about what we're going to do this year. Um, it will give us the best possible chance to be able to go out and, and try to win another one. I actually want to, you know, make sure I'm good to go. Um, I don't want to, you know, rush into anything. And, you know, we've seen, you know, unfortunately how, you know, football went with no preseason, the shortest season, and they, a lot of injuries happen. You don't kind of want that, the same thing. So, I, you know, I'm going to, you know, build up the right way. Coach has been doing a great job of doing that with our team, uh, building up the right way. Um, you know, we discussed it a little bit about Friday. I mean, we just had three days of camp, like I say, in a short time uh, to recover. So, coach is already on, you know, everybody about you know taking care of your body when we're short of season um especially with no bubble you know COVID plays a factor so all these things that um uh, can be game changers for teams you know he's doing a good job of making sure that we uh we are healthy and um it's something that we talk about but you know my job is to you know be on the floor with the team uh but also doing it you know the right way now, Danny Green talked to media in Philly after getting traded and had this to say about the Lakers' repeating aspirations. The pressure's on them. I've won back-to-back. -back. It's their job to get me there and win another one. If they don't, they bleeped it up. <laughs> that was all very lighthearted, a very lighthearted comment by sure. Danny Green. Uh, but LeBron-led team guys uh, always have a target on their back because it's what comes with LeBron James. It's all about winning. How tough do you think it will be to get the job done back-to-back? Yeah, you know, you go back to the graphic that was just up there. These teams that did not play in the bubble, 285 days between games. I mean, are, are you kidding me? So, so you're going to be seeing teams like Chicago and New York and Minnesota, not really good teams, but fresh teams. They're going to want to say, hey, we're young. We're up and coming. We're going to try to beat the Lakers in the regular season, let alone, obviously, a very tough Pacific division, uh, not a ton of rest. Uh, preseason starting on Friday. Are you kidding me? A lot going to be coming at the Lakers, no doubt about it, Mike. It's always harder to repeat. There's no question in anything in life. And the target on the back is going to be there, especially for LeBron. That's what happens when you're the best in the world at something. In anything, that's, that's what you're going to get. The flip side, though, Brez, I think to what you were saying is, since the Lakers have had such little time pass, and they have a good amount of their core coming back, they're going to be in better rhythm. They're going to actually know how to play together. And that stuff, I think, is, is going to be better than a team that hasn't played in nearly 300 days, where they're just figuring out what their rotation is going to be. And the other thing, I think, Ali, that mitigates that is the new fresh blood, the Schroeders, Montrose Harrell, Wesley Matthews coming in that haven't won before. And those guys are going to want to prove something. And I think that can pick up some of that slack for the fact that the Lakers didn't get much rest. That, those new, that new blood, I think, can help. Yeah, well. this team on paper is better than it was a year ago. No, no doubt about it. Right. We're going to talk about that new blood in just a second. But first, I want to talk about Bron's running me and Anthony Davis, because this is kind of new to him, obviously. Last year was his first finals appearance. And now here it is, a very short turnaround. What are the expectations going to be on him? You know, slightly more than LeBron at the start of the season, because LeBron, obviously, uh, so many trips to the finals over the last decade. He has earned his rest. And AD did, too. But it's really only his, his one deep playoff run that he's ever had in his career. So the, the good news for him is they have some really good uh, backup capabilities in, in a Montrez Harrell. Can't wait to see what he does. 
in a Laker uniform. So AD could just kind of relax, you know, maybe not quite uh, as much of a drop-off in, in minutes or, or, or games played at the start of the season as LeBron, but he'll get his rest for sure. You know, I'm going to go the other way in this one, too. I say 27, prime of your prime, just flexed on everybody in the postseason. <laughs> Jared Dudley is his hype beast and is telling him, go get the MVP, uh, as is Markeith Morris. AD told us that the other day. I think you were on the Zoom call. Actually, maybe you, you probably both Sounds were. Sounds about right. Yeah. And so, like, I, I think that this is his time. Now, he has to take care of his body. There's no question. Sure. But we can't discount the fact that they had four months off, more or less, during COVID from March to August, then ramped it up. They've stayed in, I think, decent enough shape to this point. And sure, if, if you're going to not play you know, here and there, I get that to make sure that the body's there. But there's no reason why AD shouldn't be going for people's necks uh, this year. Like I, I, I see him playing uh, his best basketball of his career. Yeah, we don't have to worry about the expectations for the both of you because you guys are in midseason form already. <laughs> With that said, though, I was going to add that because on the Zoom calls and having spoken to Anthony Davis as he's spoken to the media uh, so far, I think that's been the one part that he has been very delicate with is making sure his body is right. It's all about the mindset. I agree with Jared Dudley. I agree with that take, how he should just go grab that MVP. It is his for it taking, but it's all about making sure his body is right because of the history of injuries, which he has made known. Yeah, and don't forget DPOY. He's probably got a chip on his shoulder that Giannis beat him that heavily in Defensive Player of the Year. One other thing for him to kind of think about this season. Yeah, I, I just, so you're not wrong. Yep. He has to take care of his body. The Lakers did that really well in the bubble. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go overboard and then play too little. Cut him too much. Right? Yep. And get out, and because it's still about playing in games and, and doing it right. for the fans that are watching on TV, including Spectrum. So we'd love to see these guys out there <laughs> as much as they can, keep the body right, and I think they'll be just fine. Agreed. The Lakers posted some pictures of the players taking photos for what in a normal year would be taking place during media day. Dennis Schroeder looking pretty good in his new uniform. The champs didn't just sit back this offseason. They reloaded, and LeBron likes what he's seen so far. We're just so excited to have those guys here. You know, having Wes, um, you know, Dennis, um, obviously Trez and, and, and Big Mark. Um, we're extremely excited to have those guys here. Um, you know, and we're working. We're just working our habits. Um, you know, working our, um, you know, what we want to do as a team, both defensively and offensively. Um, and everyone is in tune. Everyone is excited. Um, you know, but we're going to, it's a process and it's going to get better and better every single day, every single practice. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about. But uh, we love what we've brought to this ball club along with the guys that's returned. I think it's, I think we're going to be ready uh, sooner than, than expected uh, because of the veteran guys that we did bring in uh, and Mark, uh, Wes Matthews, you know, and then the younger two guys we have, Dennis and, uh, and Trez. Uh, I feel like it's going to be, you know, as quick as possible, you know, the, uh, them guys know how to play. Mark has won a championship with Toronto, uh, so he has that that mindset and that mentality already. Uh, and the other guys are just hungry, I, I would say. You know, they 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 want that, you know, that title. You know, they want to come in and prove themselves. Uh, so I mean, I, I feel like that chemistry is going to be uh, put together as soon as possible. We don't have no no rookies. Uh, I think in this group, uh, I think we got um, Taylor and this this uh, still a rookie uh, till his first game. But uh, I think other than that, we got you know great veterans um, who are doing a great job. You know, showing leadership. You know, bringing try to bring everybody together, um, especially with Braun AD. You know. Um, we didn't have no problem with it, and I think it's easy. It's an easy transition for everyone who comes in new. So I'm going to start with you on this one, just because I love the term "new blood." Uh, mm -hmm. And so when it, when we talk about the new additions, I want to know which ones you are excited, or which one maybe you are most excited to see suit up. Yeah, if I had to pick one, let me go Montrose Harrell. Okay. I, I, it still was such a surprise that he comes across the hallway from the Clippers in the first place. When that news hit, I my Stunning. first reaction was stunned. And then I got I did get kind of excited because the way the energy with which he plays and the snarl after the dunk and like right there. Like that that's gonna be fun to watch when it, especially when you don't need it to the extent that a lot of teams do. It's almost a luxury. And I just think that his energy is going to be so important throughout the season. Anytime what we were just talking about, if somebody misses some time, um, if, it, you know, knock on wood, there's any kind of COVID situation or just players miss games in general, and then he has to take a bigger role, he can do that too. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see how Trez uh, progresses through the season. So Trez, 
What about you, the new blood? Brez did not pick Trez. Uh, I want to be a little bit different. Uh, you got the uh, reigning like. sixth man of the year. I'll take the runner-up in the award, uh, Dennis Schroeder. And this also kind of came out of nowhere. Obviously, it's a trade. And Rob Blake, a great job here. It cost him a, a late first-round draft pick and Danny Green to, to get a guy who, quite frankly, uh, scores a lot more, a uh, better passer. Uh, getting better in three-point shooting, and his defense really has improved over the last couple, uh, two, three seasons. So he's really become kind of a scrappy guy out there on the perimeter. Uh, Danny Green, very good defender, a uh, bigger guy than, uh, than Schroeder. Uh, Danny Green about 6'6". Schroeder only about 6'1", so the Lakers might miss some big perimeter uh, play out there, but as far as uh, scrappiness... Uh, Schroeder's yeah. tough to beat. Now, I would just say that Schroeder, to me, is playing more like the Rondo minutes uh, in, in that sense, and then maybe some additional backcourt minutes, whereas Danny Green, you're going to need more minutes from Kuz, like some other exactly. guys in the wing, Markeith Morris and stuff. So it's not a replacement in that sense. But I hear you. And, and Ali, uh, word out of the facility is that both these guys have been looking pretty good. So uh, How about them both together? Yeah. Yeah, the screen, and especially the screen how, roll how combo they can use. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, excited to see that. Yeah, that'll be exciting. When you just think of the threat that they were as the one-two punch coming off mm -hmm. the bench. Now, Schroeder's done with that. He, he did that for a couple of years, he said. <laughs> but right. I, you just think about the dynamic and the threat.